Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralysed man, carried by four of his friends. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and having dug through it, they lay down the mat upon which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Today's Gospel reading very much provides a series of dilemmas with different solutions to them. Dilemmas often serve as defining moments in our lives where we have often a choice to make. Do we choose option A or do we choose option B? Do we behave like this or do we behave like that? And often we never know if the choices that we make are the right choices or, for want of a better phrase, the wrong ones. Certainly, it's never really possible for us to tell what the impacts of those decisions are and what might have happened had we taken different ones. And there are many movies and films over time that have explored that theme of the path not travelled. However, like Jesus in this story, we often do not get to choose what dilemmas we will face on any given day, but we always do have the ability to choose how we will deal with those dilemmas. As Jesus and and the paralytic's friends handle their dilemmas in the story today, there are modelled for us masterful and different ways to deal with the challenges of our own lives. So, thinking first of the paralytic's friends, they can't get through the door to meet Jesus, so what do they do? It is a dilemma. Do they continue to try to work their way through the crowd, perhaps trampling over people and causing upset? Or do they go home in frustration to wait for a more opportune time to bring their best mate to Jesus? Neither. They get creative and imaginative and decide to dig through the home's roof to lower their friend to the very presence of the one they seek. In this case, their efforts serve as a striking example of perseverance in the challenge of adversity, creativity in the midst of difficulty. Certainly at a time when we ourselves have our own adversities and challenges, getting creative and finding solutions is something that many of us us have been forced to do. And indeed, then the next dilemma is presented to us. Jesus can hardly fail to have noticed the roof being removed from the, the building in which he was standing or sitting and see the mat with a paralytic man being layered down in front of him. What will Jesus do? Will he make the man walk? or make his friends carry him away. And again, Jesus does neither. Jesus forgives the sins of the paralytic. The text makes it clear that he has physical problems, but Jesus' words suggest that his primary problem is sin. He deals with the problem in a gracious, kind and loving way, just not the problem we think he's going to. And of course, this causes suspicion and angst within the crowd, and no one's quite sure what's going to happen next. Once more, Jesus is very perceptive, and he responds to the scribe's suspicion, and he does what no other person can do. He forgives the paralytic sins, and then tells the paralytic to stand up. In this exchange, Jesus introduces the final dilemma. Which is easier, to forgive sin or make the paralytic walk? 
And the answer is neither. Both, of course, are equally easy and possible for Jesus. Both are equally impossible for absolutely everyone else. What I suggest, of course, is that all of us as Christians, the church overall, in fact, are invited and encouraged to cast many of our modern dilemmas in the light of the grace found within this story. While Jesus' pronouncements bring grace to the dilemmas of the text, Jesus' presence is even more significant. Amid the crowd, the chaos and the characters who doubt who he is and what he's capable of, Jesus, of course, maintains a presence of quiet confidence, a presence of approachability, a presence of trust in God, a presence that transforms despair into hope and anxiety into amazement. Jesus, in this way, demonstrates that the answer to a dilemma might not be A or B, but it could be something else, something unexpected, a third option C, one that is only visible when we are calm, when we play close, close attention and respond with faith in his name to the problems as we face them. <laughs>